or not, you are obligated to forgive. All right, you don't have a choice to not forgive. But if you do decide to not forgive, God gonna render the same thing to you. Don't listen to St. Louis. He shouldn't be your pastor in teaching you like that. Don't listen to St. Louis, all right? All right, now, listen to Jesus. Repent, forgive that person. St. Louis can't save you on Judgment Day. St. Louis can't save you on Judgment Day. All right, everybody, I'm doing this video here because of something I just recently experienced on YouTube. Now, I want to do this video because I want to help the believers that do listen to me, okay? Now, I want I want to show you something. I want to show you some screenshots and so that you can see what transpired. Now, I had told this one person on YouTube, I told him that, because uh, he had told someone else that he wasn't obligated to forgive someone for something they have done to them. So I told him, I said, yes, they are obligated according to Jesus. You know, they need to forgive. And then so he responded by saying this. So he said, not according to John 2020, um, he has a choice. Okay. Now let's look at John 2020. And I believe he's talking about John 20, 23, because John 20, 20 says this. And when he had so said, he showed unto him, them, his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. But he's referring to 23, which says, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. So he trying to say that this other person has a choice if they want to forgive somebody or not based on that scripture so then the other persons responded and told the person that i refer to it they says uh well the one that supposedly did them wrong they says i do not forgive you and they gave john 2023 20, now look at that so i told a person i say hey uh you are obligated to forgive. You know, at the same time I told the other person that he was obligated to forgive, I told this other person that follows him, I say, you are obligated to give, to give according to Jesus. And so he said he's not obligated. And I want you to look at what he said, though. Now, this person says they are not obligated to forgive. And the other person that told him he didn't have to he says he is my pastor i do what he orders me <laughs> he do what his pastor orders him it sounds like to me buddy you better find a new pastor because this pastor that you got is going to lead you to unforgiveness he's going to lead god to not forgiving you now if you will Please follow me in some scriptures. All right. Follow me in some scriptures so we can see what the Lord says. Now, I know what you say your pastor said, but I want you to see what the Lord said. And for all, all those other ones out there, well, um, anybody else who's listening, please pay attention to what the Bible says. And, and we're going to talk about that John 20, 23 scripture as well. So Jesus was talking to those uh, 10 disciples at that time because Thomas wasn't there. Judas had already was out the picture, okay? So Jesus talking to his 10 disciples, which is 10 of the 12 that he chosen, that he had gave them power. And see, you can see more of this in the book of Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says, Verily I say unto thee, Whatsoever ye um, shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That was something that Jesus had gave to his his twelve disciples, and he also said in Matthew 16, um, 19, when he was talking to Peter, and he says, "And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven." All right. So this was something that was given specifically to Jesus' twelve disciples. 
Now, what I want you to understand is when you go back to John chapter 20 and you look at verse 23, Jesus is talking specifically to his um, to those disciples that he had chosen. OK, he's talking to those 10 disciples at this moment. OK, and he tells them this. This is nothing that he told um, all people. He didn't tell all believers this. Now, what I do want to do, now I want to show you what the Lord says for all people. Now, let's look at Mark chapter 11, and let's look at verse 25. And I got a few more scriptures I want to take you to. Just pay attention, because I don't want you to be deceived by this pastor. And in the pastor, if you are watching, don't you deceive people. Because you got to face the Lord, okay? And I want to help you as well. And I want to help any others listening. Mark eleven twenty five says this. And when ye stand praying, he says, Forgive if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. All right? So, if you got any issue with anybody, if you find fault with anybody, Jesus says that when you stand praying, he says forgive, okay? He didn't say you got a choice whether you want to forgive or not, all right? He didn't say you got an obligation you can choose. He says forgive, he says, if you have art against any. So it don't matter what someone done to you, he says, if you got an art against anybody, he says forgive, and look why he says to forgive. That your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespass. So if you want the father to forgive you your trespass, you better forgive who um, the person you got art against. All right? Now, Matthew chapter 6. Let's look at uh, verse number 14 and 15. Jesus says this when his disciples ask him to teach him how to pray. Uh, well, actually, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what he says about forgiveness. He says, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Now, this go along with what he just said in Mark 16. He says, If you forgive. If. If. Now. If you forgive. Me and their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. So how are you gonna get the heavenly father's forgiveness if you don't if you don't forgive others? Now he says in verse 15, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So while you telling others that they are they don't have to forgive, that they're obligated to not forgive, well you're setting yourself up for the Father for not, not forgiving you. And if you think I'm lying, Jesus saying this. So you're not going to believe Jesus Christ, the Son of God? You're not going to believe Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Jesus Christ, the Son of God says, If for if you forgive, for if you forgive me and their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not me and their trespasses, neither will your Father, forgive your trespasses. So you want to believe Jesus or you want to take scripture to your own interpretation? Because Jesus wasn't talking to you in John 20, 23. Okay? He's talking to you right now. The scripture I just gave you. For if you forgive me in their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive uh, not men, their trespasses, neither, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So you better take heed to that. Let's look at Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, let's look at verse 37. Now the scripture says, this is Jesus. He says, judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. So he says, Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. So if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. All right, there's three scriptures to support that. If you forgive, you'll be forgiven. But if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. All right, now 
I want to show you with the Apostle Paul, if you don't believe Jesus, <laughs> now if you don't believe Jesus, will you believe Paul? Well, I hope you will believe Jesus now, because Jesus is the Son of God. <laughs> Not God the Son. He's the Son of God. All right, so Colossians chapter 3, let's look at verse 13. Let's see what Paul says. Paul says to the Colossians, he says, and matter of fact, let's start at verse 12. He says, put on, therefore, as the elect of God. Now, as the elect of God, Paul tells you to put on, he says, holy and beloved. He says, bowels of mercy. So he's telling you to put on bowels of mercies. You're not showing mercy when you don't forgive. But he says, put on, therefore, as the elect of God. If you're an elect of God, you should be putting this on. He says, holy and beloved. He says, bowels of mercy. This is what you should be putting on. He says, look what else he says. Kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Okay, look what else he say. He say, forbearing one another. You got to forbear one another, bear with one another. And he says, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any. See, so Paul says, and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any. You got a quarrel against that person that I'm referring to. If you got a, anybody else, if you got a quarrel against anybody, Paul says that you ought to forgive one another if any man have a quarrel against any. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So just like Christ forgave you your sins, you got to forgive others. And look what he also said to the Ephesians. He tells the Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. And he says, and be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God for Christ's sake have forgiven you. So, if you are kind to one another, if you are tenderhearted to others, you will forgive one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Now, Jesus told something to his apostle in the book of Matthew chapter 18, and let's look at it. Jesus says this in Matthew 18, verse 21 and 22, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? So Peter's asking Jesus, how often should I forgive my neighbor or my brother or my sister that sins against me? Should I forgive them up to seven times? Now look at what Jesus, look how he responded. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. So no matter how many times, no matter how much wrong somebody has done to you, if they done one thing or two things to you, or three things, or 70 times seven things, Jesus says, forgive them. So are you going to call Jesus a liar? Or are you going to just accept what Jesus says because he is your Lord? And you're going to just do what your master and Lord says? Or do you want to take scripture to your own interpretation and teach others that they have a choice to forgive or not? But you know what? In reality, you're right. You got a choice to forgive. But keep this in mind. If you don't want forgiveness, then don't forgive your neighbor. But if you want forgiveness, then forgive your neighbor. All right? So I hope that you understand. I could make this video go a little bit longer, but you know what? Let's do it. Now, Jesus went on after saying this to Peter. He says, I say unto thee until seven times. He says, he says, I say not unto thee until seven times, but 70 times seven. Now look at this pair. Look at what Jesus is about to say. Jesus, uh, he also says, starting at verse number 23, he says, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. Now pay attention to this story. 
because this is he giving he's going to show you what the kingdom of heaven is like as it pertains to forgiveness all right he says therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants and when he had begun to reckon one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents all right, so one person being brought to the king, that owed the king 10,000 talents. I'm reading the King James, all right? He says, but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold. So he couldn't pay it. So his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So he sold all his family and all that he owned so that he, he could repay that payment that he owed to the king, okay? The servant therefore fell down and worshiped him saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. So now he's asking for him for patience. So it's patience with him so he could repay him, all right? Then he says, says in verse 27, then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. So he said, you know what? He, he put compassion on him. And guess what? And this is, you got to understand, this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. This is how you're supposed to be. Show compassion and loose him and forgive him that debt. If any man have a quarrel against any, all right? You got to be show compassion, tender mercies, all right? And loose him and forgive him the debt, all right? But verse 28, but look, but, but notice this. But the same servant, the same one that was just forgiven, that was showed mercy, all right, that was loosed of his debt, the Bible says, went out and found one of his fellow servants. So now he's going to find some, one of his fellow servants, a servant like him, which owed him money, which owed him a hundred pence. So now he's going to find somebody that owed him some. Now remember, he owed the king some. The king loosed him of it, showed compassion, forgave him. But now he going to go, the one that was forgiven, he going to go find one of his fellow servants that owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat. So he laid hands on him, took him by his throat and said, and, and saying, pay me that thou owest. So now he demanding that this person pay him what he owed him. Took him by his throat now, laid hands on him. And verse 29, and his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him saying, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. So now that's the same thing that he did to that king he owed. He uh, told him to be patient with him. And then the king just forgave him for it. Then he had to pay him back. But now he goes off to this fellow servant, to the one that owed him some take put hands on him, grab him by his throat and tell him, pay me all that you owe me. And so now he's asking for his patience. He said, oh, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Verse 30, and he would not. So he wasn't showing patience, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. All right. Now, when you don't forgive somebody, it's like you throwing him into a prison because you don't want to forgive him. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, so now somebody else sees what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, O you wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me I forgave you everything that you owe me because you desired to be forgiven and then, then he asked him he say shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant even as I had pity on thee so just like I had pity on you you should have had compassion or you should have showed pity to the person that owed you Verse 34, and his Lord was wroth. He was mad. He was angry and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So now that Lord, that king 
Now he sent him off to the tormentor so he could pay, so he could turn around and pay him back now. And he says, so likewise shall, now listen to this, so likewise, so just like this, shall my heavenly father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. So if you don't forgive everybody, if you don't forgive everybody, our heavenly father is going to treat you how the king turned around and treat the one he forgave because the one he forgave wouldn't forgive someone that had a trespass against him. So God going to do you the same way and he going he gonna to deliver you to the tormentors and he's not going to forgive you. So person, whoever you are, JPJP, JP, don't listen to St. Louis. All right? If you are a different person from St. Louis, don't listen to him. You better listen to Jesus. Listen to Paul. And you forgive that person that wronged you. You forgive them now. Because if you don't forgive everyone, as Jesus says, so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your heart, and the forgiveness got to come from your heart, it got to be sincere, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. So if you don't forgive that person that wronged you, I just want to let you know that St. Louis is going to set you up for unforgiveness from God. And God going to send you to the tormentors. The tormentors is the lake of fire. All right? So I hope you understand. You got to forgive. You are not obligated to forgive or not. You are obligated to forgive. All right, you don't have a choice to not forgive. But if you do decide to not forgive, God going to render the same thing to you. Don't listen to St. Louis. He shouldn't be your pastor in teaching you like that. Don't listen to St. Louis, all right? All right, now listen to Jesus. Repent. Forgive that person. St. Louis can't save you on Judgment Day. St. Louis can't save you on Judgment Day.